the following brands have in one way or another contributed to this video. In this video, everything you wanted to know about XYPU3C – wireless system for condenser microphones. What's its worth? What's inside of the box? What are the features? Weight and size? We'll take a look inside of the unit and try U3C with different microphones. Test the battery life and recharging time. And I'll answer your questions about using U3 with powered speakers, digital mixers and cameras. And it's all coming up right now! Hello everyone, my name is Max and this video is about XYF-U3C, wireless system for condenser microphones. I also will answer your questions you've asked in the comments on my XYF-U3 video, the original unit, the standard version that does not provide phantom power. In fact, these two are very, very similar and the specs are pretty much the same, so I will be referring to that video a lot. And I will give you a link to it in the description below and somewhere there, so you may want to watch that one first. Here's what the official website says about U3C. It's meant for condenser microphones, which means it provides phantom power. It uses 2.4 GHz, of course, because this is a digital wireless system. And this is important, it only works with balanced connections, with balanced microphones. Battery life 3 to 7 hours, we'll check that. And the latency is 5 milliseconds. It can provide 12 or 48 volts of phantom power. Ok, and then there are a couple of suggestions about how to use this thing. And we'll check the DSLR application later in this video. The price at Tomon for U3C is 219 euros, which is 20 euros more than for the standard U3 unit. I'll give you all the links to the product in the description. Use those to find out the actual price, because prices at Tomon change every day. Here's the packaging U3C comes in, let's take a closer look. You'll find all the specs once again on the back of the box. And a serial number on the bottom. Let's remove the cover, and the box inside is absolutely identical to the box U3 came in. Although, I don't remember U3 units to be individually packed into plastic. Oh, and this one says accessories is under the foam insert. Ok, let's unwrap this. And this is a receiver. U3 receiver, to be exact. U3 and U3C have different transmitters, but receivers are the same. And here's the new transmitter. It explicitly says U3C for condenser mic, so you won't mix them up. I expect the rest of the contents to be exactly the same as for U3. Yep, here's the double micro USB to USB cable for charging, a sticker, a warranty card, a manual, looks very similar to that one of U3, of course, and some legal stuff. And finally, my favorite one, a carrying bag, which is actually very handy. The USB cable will fit in there too. And that is everything you'll find in the box. Ok, let's take a closer look. This unit looks just like the original U3. It also has this micro USB connectors here for charging or possible firmware updates. On the other side there are controls, power switches on both of them, channel selector, buttons, and the transmitter also has this voltage switch from 12 volts to 48. To be honest, I've never seen a mic that would require 12 volts, but apparently there are some. So you can use this wireless system with those mics. Ok, what else is here? The lock button, such as it locks inside of a microphone as you plug it in, just like just like this. Um, just to be sure that you really, really plug it in, because uh, it's really tight. <laughs> Ok, there's an antenna here, an antenna there, one LED here, and there has to be, there have to be two more here, yeah, on this side. Ok, let's turn them on and see what happens. This one is on channel 1, this one is on channel 1 as well. Uh, the <laughs> color of the LED is uh, like a pink compared to the old unit, I think it was red or something else. Ok, so we've got link, let's scroll through channels real quick. Ok, no more link. Well, let's say I want channel 5. Ok. And we're connected. Let's check the weight. Here is the standard U3 transmitter. And the new one, U3C, is a little bit heavier. This much in ounces. And U3C receiver is exactly the same as U3, so there should be no difference. Here is all I have to say about the size this time. If you want to know more, you'll find that in my video on XYFU3. You know where to find the link. 
And now comes the part where I destroy things and void the warranty. As I've mentioned before, the receiver is actually the U3 receiver, so if you want to see what's inside, you'll find that in my video on U3. And now I will only take apart the new transmitter. It has exactly the same enclosure as the old one, and I've done this before, but still removing this antenna is not an easy task. And by the way, I should say, don't try this at home. You will definitely lose the warranty, maybe the unit as well, and there's also a battery inside, which can be kinda dangerous, if you stick a screwdriver into it, for example. Oh, I remember those screws to be a bit problematic as well. Here's the battery. And here's the main board, it definitely has a different layout. And a new 8-pin connector instead of the 3-pin the old board had. But all the key elements are the same. And this is the phantom power section that didn't exist in the older version. Now there are two stacked boards here. And here's a little safety advice for those who want to try this with something other than a condenser microphone. Let's say to use this transmitter to send sound from your mixer to active speakers. Notice that there is no way to turn the phantom power off, so no matter where you plug this into, you will supply that thing with 48 or 12 volts of phantom power. And while condenser microphones expect you to feed them with phantom power and dynamic mics will simply ignore it, other units like mixers or effect processors may not be able to tolerate phantom power on their outputs, so you will simply fry them, they will break. So don't plug this into your mixer unless its manual explicitly tells you that it can tolerate phantom power on its outputs. You've been warned. Ok, once again, don't plug your transmitter into your mixer's output, your mixer may not like that. Plug it into your mic and make sure it locks, just like that, such as it is secure, right? And the receiver goes into your mixer. And that's all there is to it. Now you can turn it on and you're good to go. If you want to send audio from your mixer to somewhere else, then you're gonna have to use the standard version of the U3 transmitter, the one that doesn't provide phantom power. And we'll check that option later in this video. Considering how many microphones out there require 12 volts of phantom power, I actually wish this switch would simply turn the phantom power off instead of going to 12 volts. That would make U3C way more versatile than it is now. Ok, let's try U3C with different microphones. I have a shotgun mic, a big condenser microphone, lava mic, a tiny microphone for drums over hats, and a couple of dynamic mics. Ok, let's begin with the shotgun mic. I'll plug it in, just make sure it really clicks. This one goes into channel 3. And I'm using this digital mixer, and now you should be able to see the interface right there. Ok, let's turn it on. Green LED means we have link, and I see that something is going on there, I can even hear myself. I will switch over to this mic right now. Ok, now you should be able to hear me. One, two, 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 two. Let me make this a little bit louder, yeah, that sounds good. So now you should be able to hear me talking to you through this condenser microphone. One, two, two, two. And it sounds pretty good. Ok, it works. Let's switch over to the next one to the big condenser mic. One, two, two. Ok, and this is the big condenser microphone, Studio Projects B1. Wow, I hear the reverb coming from the mixer. Ok, um, it works as well. Ok, let's switch over to the lava mic right here. One, two, two. I kind of had very strange experience with lava mics until now, because it, it kind of it's pretty hard to make them work the way you want them to work. Um, but as far as I can tell, judging by level meters, uh, there is some signal, so you should be able to hear me through this one as well. Ok, let's go to the last one. The last of the condenser mics, of course, and I'm really curious about this one because I've never tried it before and I have no idea what it's going to sound like. Uh, but uh, judging by level meters going up and down, I can tell that it's working, which is good. So it has just enough phantom power. 
hopefully the sound is not too bad. Okay, uh, let's go to dynamic microphones. One, two, 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 two. Okay, this should be probably a little bit louder. Okay, this is a very standard Beta 58 microphone, and here's what it sounds like through X5U3C. And the last one. And here is another dynamic microphone with a little bit higher sensitivity, as you can probably hear, so I will turn the volume down a bit. The thing about these dynamic mics is that they don't need phantom power, so they simply ignore it, and there should not be any noise because of that. I don't hear anything, so it works just fine, as it is supposed to. If you're wondering whether U3C is compatible with this, which is XYFU2 guitar wireless system, there is a detailed test on that in my video on U3. Let's check how long the battery is gonna last. In theory, that should depend on what kind of mic is connected to the transmitter, specifically on how much current it requires. Therefore, I have two sets of U3C with two different microphones. The shotgun mic, according to its manual, requires about 2 milliamps and the big condenser microphone needs 3 milliamps. I don't know if those numbers are accurate though, because during the test, both transmitters stopped working almost simultaneously. First, the red LED went on after about 5 hours, this is to warn you that the battery is low, and both transmitters died after about 7 hours 30 minutes, which is 2 hours shorter than the standard U3 version usually works. On the receivers, the red LED went on after 7.5 hours, and both stopped working at the 9 hour mark. Altogether, very good results, much longer than an average geek. Still, I would recommend recharging them right after you show, just to avoid the situation when you forget to recharge it, come to the next geek and it stops working somewhere in the middle of the show just because the battery is dry. And speaking of recharging, according to this test, receivers need 1 hour 20, 25, and transmitters require a bit longer, 1 hour 35 to an hour 40, which is consistent with test results on U3 in my other video. And yes, you can charge U3C and use it at the same time, although the manufacturer does not recommend that. You will find more on this in my video on U3. And all the science sheets, like latency test, frequency response test, headroom, wireless range test were important. Multiple units at once and all around interference, it's all in my video on U3, link below. Okay, it's time to answer your questions. Can you please review the new U3C with phantom power? Yes, I'm working on it. Thank you for your amazing review. You answered 99.8% of my questions. What I didn't figure out is if there are strong Wi-Fi routers around, would they interrupt the signal of the U3s? Okay, that's a question about the interference, and here's a similar one. Cucumber Wisdom, thanks a lot. What is your opinion, advice, about using XY3 wireless dynamic mic with Soundcraft UI series digital Wi-Fi mixers? In fact, I'm using this kind of mixer for live gigs with my band for a few months now, and as you can see, it has a built-in Wi-Fi router. We have two singers, and both of them use XYV3 systems, and we never had a single dropout, although I never plug the receivers directly into the mixer, and I'll tell you why later. But now, for the sake of the experiment, let's plug them right into it and see what happens. I'm also using my tab to run the mixer's interface at the same time. Okay, I'll switch over to these two mics right now. Okay, this is the condenser microphone and it runs on the wireless channel 1. And the other one, the dynamic microphone, is running on the wireless channel 6. And as you can hear, it works all at the same time without dropouts. Usually, Wi-Fi routers like this one will create problems for wireless systems like U3, especially when placed this closely together, but there is always something you can do about that. The key factor here is to find the correct combination of wireless channels that don't have overlapping frequencies with a Wi-Fi router. If it is your router and you have full access to it, I would suggest switching it to 5 GHz, because U3 does not operate in that frequency range. If that is not your case, just try a different channel. That's why there are six of them in the first place. Now, one of the reasons why I don't plug the receivers right into the mixer is because our singers use effect pedals, just like this one, and the receiver goes right into it. Here's the footage from our recent gig, and you can see the male singer using the XYV3C with his Surebetter 87A, which is a condenser microphone, and this huge TC Helicon Voice Life 3 Extreme. If you want to hear what it actually sounds like, follow that link 
or the link in the description. And if you subscribe to the channel or give a thumbs up to the video, my band will be very happy. And here is another gig with both singers using XYFU3 wireless systems, and you can see our tech setting them up during the break. And here they are in action. Look at this crowd. It was a 5-hour gig without a single dropout, and I believe many of those people had mobile phones with them. And here is how it works. I have receivers right next to microphone stands, and cables run all the way to the mixer, which is in the corner right behind my guitar. First of all, that minimizes the distance between transmitters and receivers. And second, if anything goes wrong, singers always have the option to switch over to cables. Many things can go wrong, and you should always have a plan B. Well, some of you will say it's like wiring a wireless connection, but I'll tell you what, the purpose of this is not to completely eliminate cables, but to give singers a freedom to move and perform. Wow, what a great job, thanks a lot. But have you ever tried to use U3 as a wireless connection between the mixer and active speakers? That's the way I would like to use it. Good question. No, I haven't. So let's do it right now. I have two active speakers, one, number one, and the other one is right there, number two. I will be using this standard version U3, not U3C, because I'm not ready to destroy this mixer just yet. I still need it. So let's plug everything in. Transmitter. Receiver. Transmitter. And I'll turn it on as well. Okay, let's turn on these two guys here. Green LED here, green LED here, which means there is connection. Okay, let's try to send some sound to our speakers. And it works! That's number two over there. And number one. And together. It worked just fine. For the noise ratio, the test method is not correct. U3 has a balanced output. It would be noisy if you use a simple adapter cable to connect it to an unbalanced input. Well, I actually have to agree with that. U2 and U3 were not put into the same conditions and therefore the test was not fair. Although I have to say that noise levels for U3 with simple adapters were correct. So let's fix my mistake. But first of all, let me remind you what the numbers were for the U2. With only the receiver turned on, the noise level is about minus 39, 38. And with a transmitter, Minus 36, 35, 36. Okay, let's switch over to U3. And for that, I will need two DI boxes, two patch cables, and an XLR coupler, which I will use for the receiver. Okay, the receiver goes in here. The transmitter goes in here. Now I can connect everything with patch cables, and we're good to go. Okay. With only the receiver turned on, we're getting yeah, about the same, minus 39, 38 dB, is exactly the same as it was with U2. Let's turn on the transmitter. Minus 35-ish. Well, turns out U2 and U3 have exactly the same noise level, and last time I was wrong about it. But now we know for sure. It would be noisy if you use a simple adapter cable to connect it to a DSLR camera, and so you need a preamp when using it for the camera. Well, the thing is, I don't have a preamp, but I still want to try to use U3 or U3C with my camera using one of these two adapters. And here's the difference. The first one is a simple adapter, and here is its wiring diagram, and you can see that the pins are connected directly. The other one is called impedance transformer, and it actually has a transformer built right into it, so it's like a mini DI. And there it is. Okay, now you can hear me through the microphone built into my Sony Alpha 6500 camera. 
And let's begin our test with the simple adapter. One, two. Very good. Now you can hear me through this condenser mic, XYFU3C, and a simple adapter. Let's switch to the impedance transformer. And now you can hear me through this condenser microphone, XYFU3C, and the impedance transformer. I guess you can hear the difference. And I think this is a pretty usable option. It's time for a recap, but let's continue the good old tradition and leave the cucumber of wisdom in the comments just for fun. As for the specs, latency is indeed about 5 milliseconds, the wireless range is up to 90 feet, and battery life is shorter than that one of the standard U3. Pros and cons are the same as for U3. It's easy to use, the battery lives a long time, it has a good headroom, and multiple units can run at once. It also inherited the same problems U3 had, like switches on the wrong side of the unit, relatively high latency, and specifically with U3C, I wish it had an option to turn off the phantom power. That would allow to transmit audio from mixers and effect processors. Overall, it's a good unit, and I will be using it with my band, that's for sure. Hey, thanks for watching this video. If you liked it, hit that subscribe button right there, and don't forget about the bell button to get notifications every time I'm posting a new video. A special thanks goes to people in the list below. Those are my patrons. If you want to say thanks, hit the button on the left and join the list. Well, that's it for now. Have a good day and I'll see you soon!